let's talk if we could a bit about post training. Yeah. So it uh, seems that the modern post training recipe has uh, a little bit of everything. So supervised fine tuning, RLHF, uh, the 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 constitutional AI with RL. AIF. Best acronym. It's again that naming thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then synthetic data seems like a lot of synthetic data, or at least trying to figure out ways to have high quality synthetic data. So, what's the, uh, if this is a secret sauce that makes anthropic claws so uh, incredible, what, how, how much of the magic is in the pre training? How much of it is in the post training? Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, so first of all, we're not perfectly able to measure that ourselves. Um, uh, you know, when you see some, some great character ability, sometimes it's hard to tell whether it came from pre-training or post-training. Uh, we developed ways to try and distinguish between those two, but they're not perfect. You know, the second thing I would say is, you know, it's when there is an advantage, and I think we've been pretty good at, in general, in general at RL, perhaps, perhaps the best, although, although I don't know, cause I don't see what goes on inside other companies, uh, Usually it isn't, oh my God, we have this secret magic method that others don't have, right? Usually it's like, well, you know, we got better at the infrastructure so we could run it for longer, or, you know, we were able to get higher quality data, or we were able to filter our data better, or we were able to, you know, combine these methods in practice. It's it's usually some boring matter of matter of kind of uh, 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 practice and tradecraft. Um, so, you know, when I think about how to do something special in terms of how we train these models, both pre-training, but even more so post-training, um, you know, I, I, I really think of it a little more again, as like d designing airplanes or cars, like, you know, it's not just like, oh man, I have the bl blueprint. Like maybe that makes you make the next airplane, but like there's some, there's some cultural trade craft of how we think about the design process that I think is more important than, than, you know, than, than any particular gizmo we're able to invent. Okay. Well, about, let me ask you about specific techniques. So first on RLHF, what do you think, just zooming out intuition, almost philosophy, why do you think RLHF works so well? If I go back to like the scaling hypothesis, one of the ways to skate the scaling hypothesis is if you train for X and you throw enough compute at it, um, then you get X. And, and so RLHF is good at doing what humans want the model to do, or at least, um, to state it more precisely, doing what humans who look at the model for a brief period of time and consider different possible responses, what they prefer as the response, uh, which is not perfect from both a safety and capabilities perspective in that humans are, are often not able to perfectly identify what the model wants and what humans want in the moment may not be what they want in the long term. So there's... There's a lot of subtlety there, but the models are good at, uh, you know, pr producing what the humans in some shallow sense want. Uh, and it actually turns out that you don't even have to throw that much compute at it because of another thing, which is this, this thing about a strong pre-trained model being halfway to anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so once you have the pre-trained model, you have all the representations you need to, to get the model, uh, to get the model where you, where you want it to go. So do you think our, our LHF makes the model smarter or just appear smarter to the humans? I don't think it makes the model smarter. I don't think it just makes the model appear smarter. It's like RLHF like bridges the gap between the human and the model, right? I could have something really smart that like can't communicate at all, right? We all know people like this, um, people who are really smart, but the, the, you know, you can't understand what they're saying. Um, uh, so I think, I think RLHF just bridges that gap. Um, I, I think it's not, it's not the only kind of RL we do. It's not the only kind of RL that will happen in the future. I think RL has the potential to make models smarter, to make them reason better, to make them operate better, to make them develop new skills even. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that could be done, you know, even in some cases with human feedback, but the kind of RLHF we, we do today mostly doesn't do that yet. Although we're very quickly starting to be able to. But it, it appears to sort of increase if you look at the metric of helpfulness. It increases yes. that. It also increases, what was this this word in Leopold's essay, unhobbling, where basically the models are hobbled and then you do various trainings to them to unhobble them. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I like that word because it's like a rare word. But it's so, so I think RLHF unhobbles the models in some ways. Um, and then there are other ways where a model hasn't yet been unhobbled and, and you know, needs to, needs to unhobble. If you can say, in terms of cost, is pre-training the most expensive thing or is post-training creep up? To that at the present moment it is still the case that uh pre-training is the majority of the cost 
I don't know what to expect in the future, but I could certainly anticipate a future where post-training is the majority of the cost. In that future you anticipate, would it be the humans or the AI that's the costly thing for the post-training? I, 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 I... <laughs> I don't think you can scale up humans enough to get high quality. Any any kind of method that relies on humans and uses a large amount of compute, it's going to have to rely on some scaled supervision method, like uh, uh, like um, iter- you know debate or iterated amplification or something like that. So on that super interesting um, set of ideas around constitutional AI, can you describe what it is as first detailed in December twenty twenty two paper, and uh, and beyond that, what is it? Yes. So this was from two years ago. The basic idea is, so we describe what RLHF is. You have, uh, you have a model and, uh, it, you know, spits out two pot, you know, it, it, like you just sample from it twice. It spits out two possible responses and you're like human, which response do you like better? Or another variant of it is rate this response on a scale of one to seven. So that's hard because you need to scale up human interaction. And uh, it's very implicit, right? I, I don't have a sense of what I, what I want the model to do. I just have a sense of like what this average of 1,000 humans wants the model to do. So two ideas. One is, could the AI system itself decide which, uh, which response is better, right? Could you show the AI system these two responses and, and ask which, which, which response is better? And then second, well, what criterion should the AI use? And so then there's this idea, could you have a single document a constitution, if you will, that says these are the principles the model should be using to re- to respond, and the AI system reads those um, it, it reads those principles as well as reading the environment and the response, and it says, well, how good did the AI model do? Um, it's basically a form of self play. You, you're kind of training the model against itself. And so the AI gives the response, and then you feed that back into what's called the preference model, which in turn feeds the model to make it better. Um, so you have this triangle of like the AI, the preference model, and the improvement of the AI itself. And we should say that in the Constitution, the set of principles are like human interpretable. They're like yeah, yeah. It's it's something both hu- the human and the AI system can read. So it has this nice this nice kind of translatability or symmetry. Um, you know, in, in practice, we both use a model constitution and we use RLHF and we use some of these other methods. So it's it's turned into one tool in a in a toolkit that both reduces the need for RLHF and increases the value we get from um, from, from using each data point of RLHF. Um, it also interacts in interesting ways with kind of future reasoning type RL methods. So um, it's it's one tool in the toolkit, but but I, I think it is a very important tool. Well, it's a compelling one to us humans, you know, thinking about the founding fathers and the founding of the United States. The natural question is, who and how do you think it gets to define the Constitution, the the set of principles in the Constitution? Yeah, so I'll give like a practical um, answer and a, a more abstract answer. I think the practical answer is like, look, in practice, models get used by all kinds of different like customers, right? And and so uh, you can have this idea where, you know, the model can can have specialized rules or principles. You know, we fine tune versions of models Im- implicitly. We've talked about doing it explicitly, having having special principles that people can, can build into the models. Um, uh, so from a practical perspective, the answer can be very different from different people. Uh, you know, customer service agent, uh, you know, behaves very differently from a lawyer and obeys different principles. Um, but I think at the base of it, there are specific principles that, that models, uh, you know, have to obey. I think a lot of them are things that people would agree with. Everyone agrees that, you know, we don't, you know, we don't want models to present these CBRN risks. Um, I think we can go a little further and agree with some basic principles of democracy and the rule of law. Beyond that, it gets, you know, very uncertain. And, and there, our goal is generally for the models to be more neutral, to not espouse a particular point of view and, you know, more just be kind of like wise uh, agents or advisors that will help you think things through and will, you know, present present possible considerations, but, you know, don't express, you know, strong or specific opinions. 